Hey, God bless you. It's such a joy for me to be with all of you today. Thank you so much for dropping by. Just want to decree and declare that God has amazing things in store for you as well. At this juncture, I want to take this time to wish you and your family a very blessed and a meaningful Resurrection Sunday. It's such a joy and honor for each and every one of us as believers. If there's one thing that makes us be excited is the fact that not only do we serve a God whom we know that can do amazing things, we serve a God God, we know without a shadow of a doubt that he is not a dead God. He is not a God who just lived uh, many years ago and we have no trace of him. But we serve a God who is a risen Savior. I want you to be excited today that we serve a God who is not just somewhere in space. We serve a God who is not saying, you know what, I just rose from the grave and now I am on my own. But we serve a God today, he said in Romans chapter 8 verse 11, that that the same Spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead is living on the inside of you and me. I want you to be excited today because I want you to understand that you're not on your own. I want you to understand that you're not just trying to barely get through life. I want you to understand that you're not just one of the people on earth just trying to make it through life somehow. You have an advantage. You have a benefit. You have a power. You have an anointing that is no match to what other people have. And you know what that is? That same resurrection power of God is available for you and for me. I want you to understand, it's good to remember what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary for you and for me 2,000 years ago. I want you to understand that's good for us to remember that he rose from the grave. But what I want you to understand, to live the Christian life that you and I are called to live, is to remember that this same mighty God, this same powerful God, this same anointing, this same resurrection power is available and it's visible and it's living on the inside of you and me. God is in you. You have that power. You have that same power that rose Christ from the grave. But you may be in a place in your life today where you're saying, John, that sounds nice, but I feel like I'm a victim. But I want you to understand this resurrection power is going to help you be a victor and not a victim. Yes, you may have some things coming against you and crushing you, but you are still more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus because of this resurrection power. Yes, there may be obstacles that are coming your way, but you are more than an overcomer because of this resurrection power. Get this into your spirit. You have that power to trample on snakes and scorpions. You have that power to break every chain. You have that power to come out victorious and overcome every obstacle. You have that power to slay every giant. You have that power in and through your life. But you may say, John, that sounds nice when you say that I have that power. But my reality seems to have no relation to this power that you're talking about. You're saying that I am a victor, but in reality it looks like I'm a victim. You're saying that I'm more than a conqueror, but I'm being conquered on every side by those influential enemies. John, you're saying that I am an overcomer, but everything is overcoming me. Where is this resurrection power? I don't feel it. When you take a phone, the phone has a power, that's the battery, right? The phone has a battery. I don't see the battery. I don't feel it. But just because I don't feel it does not mean the battery does not exist. The power is available. Whether I use it or not, in reality, I need to understand that the battery is existing inside the phone. I want you to understand the same way you and I, whether you feel it or not, whether you're able to see the manifestation of it at all times or not, you have to understand that the same way the battery still exists, the power still exists on the phone, this same resurrection power still exists and is living inside of you. Are you getting what I'm saying? But John, if that is the case, 
Why am I having all these challenges? Remember something, dear saints of God. Just because you are a born-again, Bible-believing, mountain-moving, devil-chasing, tongue-speaking Christian, you're not exempted from going through trials. You're not exempted from the rains and storms of life. Matthew 5, 45 says, The rain comes on the just and the unjust alike. We are all going to face it. When Jesus walked on earth, he said, in this world, you will have troubles. You're not exempted from it. You will have challenges. You're not exempted from it. You may go through the valley of shadow of death. But I want you to understand something here. The Bible does not just say you will have troubles. Jesus went on to talk about how through it all, you're going to come out victorious because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. You have to remember, you may go through the valley. The Bible does not say you're going to the valley. It's only a through. It's only a passageway for you to get to the higher mountain that's in front of you. You may go through your valley. You're not going to get your permanent residence in the valley. It's only a temporary passage for you to get to the next higher mountain. I'm here to announce to you, you may go through the storm, but you're going to come out soaring high like an eagle. You may go through the fire, but you're going to come out without the smell of smoke. You may go through the loss, but you're going to come out with double for every trouble. You may go through those ashy seasons of your life, but you're going to come out with beauty for those ashes. I want you to get this into your spirit because you have the resurrection power available on the inside of you. You may go through some challenges, but those challenges cannot come against you because you have this power which enables you to come out victorious on the other side. That's the assurance that you and I have. You have to understand, you may go through the turbulence in your life, but you're going to have a safe landing for God to help you accomplish the task He has for you. You may go through some giants, but the giants cannot slay you because those giants were meant by God to promote you, to take you to the next level of your destiny. You may go through those storms, but the storm cannot stop you. God is going to use it to make you strong in Jesus' name. Amen? The storm, the challenges are not something you have to look at and say, Oh my gosh, I have this problem. Don't look at your problem as a problem. Look at your problems as a platform to demonstrate God's resurrection power in and through your life. When we think about David, it was Goliath which changed the trajectory of his life. When you think about Jesus, he was dead. They thought the story was over. They closed the tomb. They thought everything was done. But that's not the end of the story. In this world, you will have troubles. You're not exempted. You're not living on cloud nine. You're not going to be at the top of the mountain all the time. But the good news is that when you are using those problems as a platform for God's power to be manifested, you're going to come out and not only will you come out better, but you're going to be in such a way that God's name will be glorified in and through your life. I've shared this many times how two times I've called on the Lord and brought down rain. There was one particular instance when there was no rain in that place for over four months and everybody was sitting and complaining and talking about how there is no rain, how the climate is so hot and humid and sultry and we're not able to manage. It was such a bad place. But one day I had this boldness that the Lord had put in my spirit and I said, you know what? I'm not going to sit and complain about this. This may be a problem, but I'm going to use this problem to talk about the limitless power part of God. And I said, you know what? I'm going to pray and make it rain. And you know what people would do? People laugh, people mock, but I didn't mind. I said this at 7.30 in the night, went out. There was no sign of rain. I said, you know what, God, even if there's not a cloud in the sky, you can make it rain. I have that boldness. If Elijah could bring rain from heaven, Gifta can also bring rain from heaven. I went out. I came back at 8.25 back to my room, and the first thing I hear is the sound of rain. And there was a two and a half hour 
non-stop pouring of rain. And people were cheering and things like that. And the people who laughed and mocked came back scratching their heads saying, your God is truly the God of the universe. That testimony went far and wide with so many people of different faiths came and said, your God is so powerful. I want you to understand something here. When you stand up and say, you know what? I'm not going to let the problem be a problem, but I'm going to use the problem to be a platform to demonstrate the power of God. You can bring bring the glory to God. Amen? But you may say, John, that sounds nice. But there seems to be like a total contradiction between what I know, between what I believe, and my reality. You have to remember something here. Jesus, the Son of the living God, was now dead and buried in a tomb. And the stone was rolled. And there were guards sitting on the outside guarding the tomb. It seemed like a contradiction because Jesus said in John 11 that I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I am life. He didn't just say, I have life. He said, I am life. And now it looked like a contradiction that the one who was life himself was now dead. Sometimes your life may seem like a contradiction. People may tell you, you're saying that your God is a healer. Why are you still sick? You're saying that your God is powerful, but why are you still so weak? You're saying that your God is able to meet your needs. Why are you still struggling to pay your bills? You're saying that God is able to give you what you need at the time of need. No good thing will leave with all them that walk uprightly. Then why are you still seeking for a job and you still not got a job? Why are you still in this season of your life? Why aren't you seeing the progress in your life? I'm here to announce to you there may be moments just like that when you're saying there's a total contradiction between what you know, what you believe, what you know God has spoken over your life and the reality of your life. But I want you to understand just because it is like that right now does not mean it's going to be that way all the time. God is going to show himself up. It may seem like this is how it's always going to be. It may seem like this is how your lot in life. But I'm here to announce to you the same way on the third day when he rose back to life, defiling all odds. I'm here to tell you something, dear saints of God. Your life may seem like a contradiction. Your life may seem like, you know what, people thought it's given up. There's no hope for you. There's no way out for you. But I'm here to announce to you, dear saints of God, God is is about to turn the tables around. God is about to shift people across. God is about to connect the doors of your life. God is about to open doors no man can shut. God is about to bring down heaven's resources down to give you provision for your vision. He's going to bring divine connections your way. Get ready for what God is about to do in and through your life. It may seem hopeless. It may seem there's no way out. But God, as all of heaven's resources, is available at your disposal because of the power of God. And when God does that miracle in and through your life, nobody can say anything. There can be weapons formed against you. But I'm here to announce to you, the only thing that's going to prosper is not the weapon. It's you because of the resurrection power of God available for you. Think about it. You know, there are so many things that came along trying to stop me from doing what I'm doing, following the call of God over my life. There were so many obstacles that the enemy threw. I want you to understand when you say yes for God's call, when you go after the dreams God placed in your heart, when you go after the desires that God put in your spirit, when you go after the promises that God has deposited within you, when you go after the visions that God showed you, there will be things that will come against you to discourage you, to stop you from making you believe that it can be possible possible and you may look at the reality of your situation and things like it's not going to happen but I'm here to tell you the enemy is not going to throw a red carpet for you to go and fulfill God's call you have to dig your heels in and say enough is enough I'm not going to let this stop me discourage me and make me quit or to give up I'm going to still hold on because my resurrection day is coming my day of turnaround is coming my shift is coming God is about to show himself up and God is going to get all the glory. God is going to get all the credit. Not me, not man, but God is going to do it. Get ready for that. The 
thing I want you to understand is they placed a big stone covering the tomb. And I was just thinking about this. When you look at the difference between a rock and a stone, I was just thinking about this. A rock is huge in size. A rock is more heavy. A rock is bigger in size in comparison to a stone. Now, what I want you to understand is this. The Bible goes on to say in the book of Isaiah 20 says that our God is the rock of ages. And I was just thinking for a minute, how could a stone contain a rock? How can a stone win over a rock? Because of who Jesus said he was. Because of who he was. The truth came out when the stone could not contain him. The tomb could not contain him. Because he was life himself, death could not contain him. Because he was the rock of ages, the stone could, had to be rolled away. I'm here to tell you something, dear saints of God. Your true identity, that you are having the resurrection part of God, is going to be demonstrated in your life. It may be a due season when you are going through moments when you are still buried, when you're going through moments of discouragement and hurt, you're going through moments when you are in the tomb of your life. It seems like you're hopeless, there's no way out and you're disappointed. I want you to get ready because that cannot can be contained all the time. There may be seasons like that. There may be three days when Jesus was in the tomb, but get ready, your resurrection day is bound to come. I give you glory, Lord. God is going to show himself up in our life. Now, when you think about this, Matthew chapter 28 talks about the time when the women were walking towards the tomb early in the morning. And I want you to understand something very important here. They were walking towards the tomb they had already spent so much of time preparing the spice. And now they were going and they still have no idea of something very important. They do not know how they're going to roll away the stone. But what I want you to understand is this important truth. That the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came and rolled away the stone. What I want you to know is there may be obstacles in your path towards your God-given destiny. And you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to overcome this obstacle. I am not able to do it on my own. But the good news is you're not on your own. You have all of heaven backing you up. You have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and all of heaven's angels on your side, with God on your side, you form the majority and get ready. God supernaturally is going to remove every obstacle your way. I want you to get this into your spirit, dear saints of God. There may be obstacles coming against you. There may be challenges thrown by the enemy against you, but you are not on your own. In the natural, it may seem like a mission impossible. You may say, oh, with men, it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Get ready to believe in God for the impossible today. That resurrection power is available at your disposal and that is going to open doors no man can shut. That is going to turn the tables around. That is going to shift people across. That is going to connect some doors. That is going to help you see some red seas parting and some walls coming down. And God is going to help you get to your promised land. There were guards there guarding this tomb. I want to tell you, there could be some people in your life who are trying to stop you. There could be people in your life trying to keep you in your tomb, trying to keep you down and discouraged. There could be people in your life who are trying their best to keep you where you are. They don't want you to grow. They don't want you to come out. They don't want you to, they can do all they want, but get ready. People don't have the final say. People don't control the door and gates of your life. Almighty God is your doorkeeper. He is the one who's going to open doors. No man can shut. He's not going to get the permission from Herod. He's not going to get the permission from Pilate. He himself is going to roll away the stone and he's going to make you come out of the tombs of your life. I want you to get excited today that people don't control your destiny. God does. This Resurrection Sunday, walk with that awareness. 
and you will experience the resurrection part of God. How joyful it is to come to know that we don't need to fear any foe since Christ came down at the right hour to freely give us his resurrection power. The enemy might attack us with a word saying we are no match to this world but then comes a decision to make to believe his word is nothing but fake. You might go through the fire and the storm but then his power lets you come out strong. With this mighty power we win and overcome every challenge and struggle that are yet to come. We are not merely victims but rather victors not just in one or two but in every sector. Whether sickness or addiction, failure or depression, we break every chain by the power of resurrection. We are so privileged to have this power for helping us defeat our enemy's star. I can hardly imagine how it would be if it hadn't been for this power in me. At this juncture, we're going to listen to this beautiful song, an original composition by Pastor Simon Johnny called The Lord God Almighty which will remind you of how the universe could not contain him. No force could restrain God. And that power and that God is in you. And I will see you right back. sufficient God you will always make me fruitful you will always be by my side hallelujah Lord God almighty we worship you we worship you Worship you. in your hand El Shaddai you are greater than all greatness universe can't contain you no force can restrain you 
Yet you will always be by my side Hallelujah Lord God Almighty We worship you We worship you Hallelujah Lord God Almighty We worship you We worship you If your heart stops beating now, do you know where you're going? If you came face to face with death now, do you know where you're going? And this is not a message of condemnation. This is a message of hope. There is a God who loves you so much. He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to come down and pay a heavy price by shedding every drop of His blood on the cross. Thank you for dying for my sins. When you believe in Him, you have free gift of salvation for you. That assures us that we will go to heaven when we die instead of suffering in hell forever. I just encourage you today to make the simple step of faith and say, Jesus, I thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you for giving me this gift of eternal life. you're doing is making an impact. You know, God just wants a surrendered yes, and it looks like you've given him your surrendered yes. I would just encourage you to keep going and uh, listen to God as to what he wants you to share. And uh, it's been uh, wonderful listening to all of your messages, listening to your podcasts and your books and everything. It's just a great thing. God bless you and what you're doing. And God bless all of the people that listen, whether they're believers or not. Stick around because you will get something out of this. First, I want to honor what you're doing in the kingdom of God and helping so many uh, lives to come to know Christ. And keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. Get ready. This is just the beginning for you, John. And God is going to take you to nations.